What's up, everybody? Happy Easter. Well, almost Easter. But Easter is always worth celebrating. That's right. I'm Micah. I'm Joe. And I'm Madeline. Today's Easter celebration is going to be so full of fun. And mega surprises. And I say we kick it off with our first challenge. But before we get started, we need for all of you to pick a team. And obviously, I recommend cheering for the best team, Team Green. No way. You got to cheer for the yellow team. Guys, I'm pretty sure they'll all be on the side of the challenge master, AKA Team Pink over here. Okay, on the count of three, everyone shout out who you're cheering for. One, two, two three, three. Yeah! All right, now that you've picked your team, it's time to reveal our first challenge. Extreme Duck Dash. As you can see, we've attached our ducks to our racer of choice. The goal of this game is to get our ducks to cross the finish line while trying to avoid all of the obstacles. All right, everybody cheer as loud as you can for your favorite duck. Yeah, let's get quacking. All right, remote control's ready. I'll count us down. Three, two, one, dash. points to Team Pink for finishing first. Green Team gets one point for second place and no points for Team Yellow. Now that we've finished the first challenge of the day, it's time for you guys to play a game. Everybody, hop up on your feet for one of our favorites. Hop up high and duck down low to help the bunny dodge some surprising obstacles and get to the basket of eggs. You can take a seat. And now, a word from the Yokester. Why did the Easter egg hide? Because he was a little chicken. Because he was scared. <laughs> Okay, okay, look, there's more, there's more, wait. Okay, here we go. Okay, what type of jewelry the rabbits wear? 14 karat gold. I just, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, okay, here we go. We'll do another. What do you call a bunny with fleas? Think about it. Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Guys, it's just. Okay, one more, one more, and then we'll keep going. Okay. What game the bunnies play at recess? Hopscotch. <laughs> Hopscotch. Just can say hop. Have you seen a bunny they hop? Hopscotch. Okay, I'll be, I'll be here all week. I think, I don't know. I'm an egg. You know, that guy's really cracking me up. Oh yeah, I think we need to leave the yolks to him. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. You're right. With all these duck races, bunny jokes, egg hunts, basket full of surprises, I just love it all. Oh, and don't forget about the marshmallowy peeps, jelly beans, and those giant chocolate bunnies. Easter really is the best. And the reason we celebrate it all is because of what Jesus did for us. Let's check this out. The Bible is full of stories about people just like you and me who do wrong things like lie and make fun of others. We all love ourselves way more than we love God, and that hurts our friendship with Him. Would you be friends with someone who lied and hurt the people you love? 
A list of wrong things we do goes on and on because we're all sinful. But God had a plan since the beginning of time to forgive our sin and fix our broken friendship with Him forever. And that's where Jesus comes in. Jesus gave up His sweet life in heaven to come down to live on earth. Would you leave your home if you had the largest pizza buffet with all you can eat ice cream for dinner? Well, we don't know exactly what heaven is like, but we do know it's more amazing than we could ever imagine. I wouldn't give that up. No way. But that's what Jesus did. He gave up everything to come and be with us. And while he lived on earth, Jesus experienced the same things we do, including the temptation to do wrong things. But what's so amazing about Jesus is that he lived a perfect life. That's right, I said perfect. No bending the truth, no arguing with his brother, and no sneaking candy when mom said no. A completely sinless life. Wow, that's something we could never do. And because of that, we needed someone perfect, aka Jesus, to take the punishment for all of our sins. As Jesus got older, he began traveling around, telling everyone about God's love, healing the sick, walking on water, and performing miracles. We're talking feeding thousands of people with one tiny lunch kind of stuff. And as you can imagine, many people heard about Jesus and wanted to know more about him. Jesus got real famous real fast, and people from all over came to see him. But as his popularity grew, it started to make the religious leaders at the time really uncomfortable. They were like, what? Does he say he's God's son? The Messiah? The savior God has promised? That can't be right. Well, as Jesus kept performing miracles, they just became angrier and angrier and demanded he be punished. They took him to Pilate, their head honcho guy, and even though Jesus had done nothing wrong, Pilate gave in to some serious peer pressure and let them take Jesus away to kill him. One of the hard parts about Easter is to hear about all the really horrible things they did to Jesus. They spit on him, beat him up, and nailed his body to a cross. It was terrible, the absolute worst. As Jesus took his last breath, the skies grew dark and he cried out, Father, I give you my life. Then he died. It felt like all hope was lost, but don't worry. God had a plan, remember? One of the religious leaders named Joseph didn't agree with what had been done to Jesus. It's like he knew that Jesus was really who he said he was. So he took Jesus' body down from the cross, wrapped it in linen, and placed it in his own tomb. Then a large stone was set in place to cover the entrance. Three days later, two of Jesus' friends named Mary went to visit his tomb. And that's when they got the surprise of their lives. The earth began to shake. And out of nowhere, an angel appeared to roll the stone away. The angel told the women that Jesus had risen just as he said he would, and they should go quickly and tell the others that Jesus is alive. Did you hear that? Jesus is alive. They had the most surprising and wonderful news. Soon after, Jesus began appearing to his disciples and many others. He encouraged them to give their lives to following him and sharing the good news of how he came to save everyone from their sins. And the best part was that Jesus promised to be with them and help them do it. So naturally, the disciples were like, sign me up. They spent the rest of their lives telling others all about Jesus' love. And we can too. Believing that Jesus gave his life for us and giving our lives to him is the best decision we can ever make. Then he will be with us every day and help us tell others all about his amazing love. There's nothing better than knowing that Jesus gave his life for me. That life-changing news is what we need to know today. And that means it's time for our Need to Know Easter Challenge. Ah! For this challenge, we'll try to be the first to find all of the words in today's Need to Know and put them in the correct order. The words are hidden inside of our pinatas, full of eggs, candy, and other surprises. 
If you're rooting for Team Yellow, cheer for the duck. Let's get those cheers started. Ducky, ducky, ducky. Um, I know that this egg pinata is going down in record time. And Team Pink is taking on the bunny. Let's do this. Jesus gave his life for me. Team Yellow got the need to know first and gets a point. Another amazing Easter challenge in the books. Now, everybody stand up. It's time to sing one of our favorite songs. your love and what you've done for me i know you saved my life and i'm thankful now each day i'll follow you with my heart and all i do you're everything to me and i'm thankful your love and what you've done for me i know you saved my life and i'm thankful now each day i'll follow you with my heart and all i do you're everything to me and i'm thankful Hey dude, what you got there? Oh, just everyone's favorite candy to see peeking out of their Easter basket, jelly beans. Do you want one? You know it. Ugh, what is that? <laughs> it looks that? like you just got bean boozled. <laughs> the yellow one? Uh. Mm, it looks like the yellow one is either butter popcorn or rotten egg. It's just a surprise in your mouth when you try one. That's the worst surprise ever. Let me try. And that's a good surprise. Why were people so mean to Jesus? It's pretty surprising to think that anyone would be so cruel to someone who had never, ever done anything wrong. The Bible tells us that when Jesus was handed over to the religious leaders, they took him to the Praetorium, a palace, where they all gathered around him and placed a purple robe on him. Then they twisted some thorns together to make a crown and placed it on his head. They gave him a stick to hold, bowed down in front of him, and mocked him, saying, We honor you, King of the Jews. Jesus had taught his followers that he was the Savior God had promised to send. You know, the King of Kings, the Messiah. So by giving him a royal robe, a crown, and a scepter, they were making it clear they did not believe in Jesus. In fact, they believed he was a criminal for claiming to be the King of the Jews. But why did God allow them to do this to his perfect son? 
It may sound surprising, but God allowed the people to crucify Jesus so that he could take the punishment for our sins, which is death. Jesus is all powerful and he could have called for angels to help him at any point while he hung on the cross, but he didn't. Jesus chose to die for you. He loves you so much that he took the punishment for your sins on the cross. And he defeated sin by coming back to life so that you and I could be friends with God every day. What does it mean to give your life to Jesus? When you become a Christian and give your life to Jesus, you're becoming a part of Jesus' family. The Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of you and kind of speaks to you. You can kind of tell when you become a Christian. You can tell like there's something there telling you what you need to do. I follow Jesus because it's a choice, but it's the best choice you're ever gonna make. And it's just such a special experience being with somebody that will always love you and always listen to you. I decided to follow Jesus because I, I like knew it was the right thing. Just somewhere in my heart, I was like, no, this is the right thing to do, so I'm gonna do it. I decided to follow Jesus because He is our God and He is good and He died for our sins. How do you feel when you pray and talk to God? When I pray to God, um, I can tell Him anything that um, makes me feel down or makes me feel so happy. When I pray, I feel good inside and happy to let all the things that I need to tell God out. When I pray, I know God is listening and He always loves me. Why is it helpful to read your Bible every day? I love to read my Bible every day because it's a great positive start to my day to get my mindset straight for the rest of the day and just to be in a positive mood. God speaks to me the most when I read my Bible because when I'm reading my, His Word, I receive His messages. I try to read my Bible every day because I know that when you read the Bible, the Lord always has something for you. He always has something for you every time you open the Bible. And when you don't, then you're missing out on an opportunity to hear from the Lord. Hearing that story is my favorite part of our Easter celebration so far. For sure. Knowing that Jesus gave His life so that I can be friends with God is the reason our lives can be so full of joy and hope. Let's celebrate Jesus and the empty tomb with one last challenge. Um, I'm guessing it has something to do with Joe's bunny suit that he's wearing. You know it. This challenge is called Dizzy Carrot. We'll have three questions about all the surprising things we've learned today. For the first round, Joe will read the question and hold up two answers. Then you and I will place our heads on these carrots and spin around five full times before running to be the first to grab the correct answer. But dude, I call bunny suit for round two. And I'll be the bunny for round three. The one who has the most correct answers at the end of all three rounds will be named the Dizzy Carrot winner. Be sure to call out the correct answer and cheer us on so you can play with us. What did Jesus tell his disciples to do with the rest of their lives? A, go and tell others about his love, or B, to go and dye Easter eggs. On your mark, get set, get dizzy. gets another point and takes the lead. Who gave up his sweet life in heaven to fix our friendship with God? A, Peter Rabbit, or B, Jesus? All right, on your mark, get set, get dizzy. it up. Come on, Yellow, don't give up. Why was Jesus the perfect one to take the punishment for our sin? A, because he never sinned, or B, because he never ate a rotten egg. Final round. On your mark, get set, get dizzy. Game, 
came, everyone. Hey, everybody. We've had the best day seeing how Jesus gave up his life for us so that we can be friends with God. Yes, I am so thankful that even though our list of sinful thoughts and choices just goes on and on. Jesus just still loved us so much that he gave his life for us. And when we believe that Jesus died for us, we can give our lives to him and follow him forever. That will lead to the best lives we can possibly live. Let's all pray and thank Jesus for all that he has done. Hey Jesus, we're sorry for all the wrong things we do. We don't deserve your love, but you love us so much that you were willing to give up everything to save us from our sin. Thank you for dying on the cross and coming back to life so that we can be friends with God forever. You changed everything and we love you. Amen. 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 Well, hip hop hooray, everybody. Have fun celebrating all that Jesus has done for you and tell everybody you know to join us next week. We'll see you guys soon. Bye, Bye guys. <laughs>